Hello and welcome to Linux Hint YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the most fundamental concept when it comes to programming. We are going to talk about loops in C programming language. Loops are by far one of the most used concepts when it comes to programming in general regardless of the language. So without wasting any time, what is a loop? A loop is a predefined set of instructions that allows the user to repeat a block of code for a certain amount of times. Using loops can save the programmer infinite amount of time. I mean, just imagine that you have to print something a hundred times. What would you do? Would you use the printf function to write hundred lines of code or would you just simply use three lines of code that would give us the same result? Obviously, any sane man would use three lines of code to get more done. In C programming language, there are three types of loops. The first one being the while loop, the second one being the do while loop, and the last one being the for loop. We're going to explain all of these loops with examples, so stick around to get a better understanding of how to work with loops in C programming language. The while loop. The most basic loops of all is the while loop. The while loop is used to run a certain block of code while a certain condition holds true. So what does it mean a certain condition holds true? When you use the keyword while, you need to input a condition within the parenthesis of the while loop. And as long as this condition is true, all the code inside the body of the while loop will be executed for an infinite amount of time. The execution will stop once the condition holds false. To understand the working or the flow of the while loop, take a look at this flowchart that is being displayed to you on your screens right now. The program pointer comes inside the for loop and the first thing that it has to do is check for the condition. If the condition is resulting in a true value, the program pointer goes inside the body of the while loop and executes all the commands inside the body of the while loop. And once all the commands have been executed, it goes back to the condition and rechecks the condition if it is still true or false. If the condition is true, the cycle repeats. And if the condition is false, the cycle breaks and the program pointer comes out of the for loop and starts executing the remaining program. So for the code example, what we are going to do is that we are going to write a program that would take a number from the user and print its table up to 10. So what is the first thing that we need? We need a variable that we will use to get the input from the user. Next, we need to prompt the user for the input. For the next line, we use a scanner statement to get the input from the user. And so we store this input in the num variable that we just created. Now here's the thing with uh, loops or while and do while loops in particular. To often justify a condition, we need to create a counter variable. And this counter variable at the end of the body of the while loop is used to change or manipulate the condition. So in our example, we need to print a table of a number up to 10 instances. So we need a counter variable that will count from 1 to 10. And after the, the value increases from 10, we need to stop the while loop. So how do we do this? So we create a counter variable and we set it equal to 1. Then we use the keyword while. And our condition is while the counter is less than or equal to 10, you execute this particular block of code. And the, for the block of code, it's pretty easy. We simply use the printf function. And we simply print out percentage %d multiplied by percentage %d is equal to percentage %d. Now these are all escape sequences and I am assuming that you are well aware of how escape sequences work with printf function. For the first percentage %d, we are going to use num, which is the number inputted by the user. For the second one, we are going to use the counter and for the last one, we use num multiply by counter. Now what happens if we execute this program? Let's see. So we have the counter variable at 1. The program comes inside the while loop and starts printing this line. But nothing happens to the counter variable. No alteration has been made to the counter variable. So the counter variable stays at 1. The condition never changes and the program falls into an infinite loop. So how do we stop this infinite loop? We stop this infinite loop by changing the value of the counter variable and we set it equal to counter plus plus. What this does is that on every new execution of this while loop, the value of the counter increases by 1. So there will come a time when this value of counter variable will increase from 10. So now if we run this program, we should get our table printer 
to run this I'm gonna simply save it and run the code so to run this code I have changed a little error over here we needed to use this AND symbol so to run this code I'm going to save the file and click on run code so it asks us for a number and we input 5 and there you go we have our table printed on our screens now you may think that you could have easily just used the printf statements 10 times to get the same exact result well yeah you could have but the thing is what if you wanted this table printer to print up to 100 instances would you actually write 100 instances of this printf line or would you simply come over here to this condition and change it to 100 I mean just execute the program and enter the number 5 you get out the result we have a table printer that prints up to 100 instances I mean yeah it is time saving okay now we are done with the while loop since I've already explained what is a loop and all those things I'm not going to go over that again and again so I'm going to jump inside the second loop which is the do while loop well unlike the while loop which checks the condition first and then executes the body of the while loop the do while executes the body one time and after that one time it checks for the condition and then the whole cycle of the while loop is repeated again and again until the condition is resulting in a false value the syntax and the flowchart of do while loop is being displayed on your screen right now so as you can see in the syntax the block of code that is to be repeated is placed inside the body of do and the condition is placed after the body with the keyword while now if you look at the flowchart the program pointer comes inside the do while loop it goes and executes all the instructions within the do keyword and after that it checks the condition inside the parenthesis of the while loop if the condition holds true all the lines within the body of the do is executed again and if the condition results as a false value the program breaks away from the do while loop and starts executing the remaining parts of the program there are multiple instances where the do while loop is much more useful and much more efficient than the while loop but everything has its pros and cons and it's up to the programmer to decide what type of loop that he wants to use now imagine a program where you want to greet the user a certain number of times based upon the input of the user but even if the user inputs a zero value you still greet him once so how do we do this we do this by using a do while loop so with the code we simply take an input from the user using the printf function to prompt the user and we get the output using the scanf function and just like the previous example we do want a counter variable so we're going to create a counter variable so what do we want to do we want to greet the user at least once by saying hello and welcome to linux Int. and at the end of every iteration of the loop we want to increase the counter variable by one and for the condition of the while loop we want to execute this block of code until our counter variable is less than or equal to the number of times the user has asked to be greeted so let's dry run this the user inputs a value that is stored inside this variable num then we have a counter variable that starts from zero then the first thing we do is that before checking the condition we at least greet the user one time and after greeting the user we increase the count of the counter variable by one now that we have executed all the code inside the do part we are going to check for the condition we are going to check whether the counter is greater or equal to the number num and based on this condition we are going to decide whether to leave this do while loop or to stay inside it so let's save this program and let's try executing it we want to be greeted by let's say 5 times and there you go we have been greeted 5 times but we still don't see the actual use of the do part so let's try executing this program once more and this time we're going to choose the number of times to be 0 and there you go we were still greeted at least once so that was this very short video on while loop and do while loops the last loop is the for loop and we have prepared a separate video for for loop which is very short and concise 